Halo BFA. Ya, yeah, you can you can come to me. Uh, you can use this. Hang on. Uh, Bu Lasmi, so you may have a chat with uh, Miss Vivin in talking about this while waiting for the participant. Yeah, yeah. Hello, Miss Vivin. How should I call you, Miss Vivin? Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Yes, you can call me Vivin. Okay, in Peace Corp, yeah. How long have you been uh, a coordinator for Peace Corp in Indonesia? I joined Peace Corps in September 2010, so it's been a little over 10 years for me oh, now. I can see it. So you've got uh, many experiences, yeah? <laughs> uh, yeah, I learned a lot. I learned so much from uh, working there. And what is a recent program from Peace Corps in Indonesia here? Mana, mana. Core is a volunteer organization mm. founded by um, U.S. President John F. Kennedy mm -hmm. in two thousand uh, in uh, one in sixty five in nineteen sixty. Sorry, I'm sorry. I need to <laughs> remember. <recall> it. <laughs> remember clearly again. It's from in nineteen sixty one. 1960. I was trying to juggle with things. Uh, I should not um, multitask this time while answering questions. <laughs> so yeah, uh, it was established in 1961 mm -hmm. to challenge young people in the United States to, he asked them, uh, don't ask uh, what the country can give you, but ask what you can do to your country. So he challenged uh, young people in the United States to serve, mm -hmm. uh, not in the military, not as um, an army or a soldier, but uh, to work in development through Peace Corps. So from 19, so we just Peace Corps just celebrated its 60th um, hmm? anniversary. 60. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. So it's been 60. Uh, I got information about you. You you really like sports, yeah, indoor and outdoor, right? Yes, <laughs> I do. I can see from your face and also your body. <laughs> 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 you are healthy enough there. I hope so. Thank you. I thought you were still twenties in your twenty teens, but you know. You, you are know, not. Right? Yeah. <laughs> we are we are at the same age, but because of doing sport, seems that you look much, much younger than your age. Yeah, we can so tell you. Ibulas me, that's a lesson. That's a lesson. So yeah. <laughs> a Sometimes. warrior must do sport. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember to one of uh, the movie, yeah, that's I forgot the title of the movie. It talks a lot about a woman there. Wonder Woman? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I remember Wonder Woman. Oh, yeah, Wonder Woman. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Finn. Um, my other computer is not work well, so I use Mr. Wafi's computer here. I, I, cha I changed the computer uh, because I want to make it, uh, what is it, work better. But unfortunately, it is worse. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah. Ma'am, never mind. <laughs> yeah. Okay. While well, waiting, maybe uh, Witri or uh, Sajida or maybe Rika, you want to ask questions to Ibu Fifin. Uh, she's one of my uh, friends in undergraduate study, and she's now working in uh, NGO, non-government non organizations, and if you want to ask questions to Fifin, dealing with that. Okay, while well, waiting, maybe uh, Witri or uh, Sajida or maybe Rika, you want to ask questions to Ibu Fifin. 
Uh, she's one of my uh, friends in undergraduate study, and she's now working in uh, NGO, non-government organizations, and maybe you want to ask her questions. Uh, maybe I can continue um, sharing or speaking about Peace Corps. So, yeah, it's true. Uh, in so the, the Peace Corps is a non uh, it's a government organization, institution, a U.S. government institution uh, set up, established in um, 1961, and then in Indonesia, we have our first. Uh, volunteers serving in Indonesia in 1963. It was still during um, Sukarno's, President Sukarno's era. Uh, at that time, volunteers worked in the area of um, sports education and also English education. Uh, but unfor unfortunately, uh, since there was a political turmoil in 1965, we had to evacuate volunteers and we only return back to the country, to Indonesia under the administration of President SBY at that time. And um, we had our first group after 45 years gap uh, coming into Indonesia. And we have East Java as our um, our pilot province. And Pamakasan was also one of the first sites that we developed. We had our uh, first volunteer in Madura, Mr. Oh. Scott, if you remember. Yeah, um, Ms. My, my husband. <laughs> yeah. husband yeah. Scott is, uh, Scott's counterpart is Miss Eva's Husband. Uh, volunteer. <laughs> yeah. 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 My husband yeah. is a Scott volunteer, but I thought he was in Africa right now. I lost contact with him. Yes. Uh, it's the same case for me. I do not yeah. uh, have any more contact. But yeah, but I still contact. Uh, I have a contact with his sister, Caroline. We often share comments in, in her Instagram. Right. So, yeah. So Pamakasan is no strangers to Peace Corps. Uh, yeah. We have Jessica. Our... We have Jessica. Uh, yes. She worked with us last year, but she go back to America on April. Yeah. April. Jessica. Uh, March. Yeah. March. April. March. Yeah. March. Yeah. Yeah. Because of the COVID nineteen. Yeah. Yes. So uh, up to now, so it's been a year anniversary of global volunteers evacuation around the world. We do not have volunteers serving uh, right now due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So, But we are working to plan if, if the plans goes well, we hope to welcome them back slowly in late this year and also June next year. But again, we have to wait until, wait and see. Um, hopefully things are looking bright so that we can um, continue serving in Indonesia. Uh, will it be the same volunteer as last year or you will have another volunteer? So for our, we don't know yet mm -hmm. because you know it's been a year and people a lot of people they move on they found mm -hmm. a new, a new job, job yeah or they enroll into um, yeah new... just jessica work in a clinic right now i see yeah i see so for a new recruitment it will be takes uh a little time, right? Because they have to, what is it? Learn what is Indonesia, how to teach in Indonesia. It, it takes months, right? Almost a year. Uh, 
Um, for the initial training, it usually takes them um, 10 weeks, intensive weeks. Yeah. Before, before they um, serve, we need to make sure that they, they are well prepared in terms of language, in terms of English teaching, in terms of culture, um, how to take care of themselves, how to maintain their own health and as well as safety and security. So yeah, they have to go through mm -hmm. 10 long mm -hmm. intensive weeks of training before being placed um, in, at their sites. Mm -hmm. So current, uh, before the evacuation, we work with three provinces, East Java, West Java, as well as uh, East Nusa Tenggara or NTT. Yeah, Nusa Tenggara, yeah. Ibu Lasmi, Ibu Lasmi, maybe we can start to save the time while waiting for the other presenter. Yeah, yeah. thank you very much uh, for the chance. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, everybody. Hello and welcome everybody to today's session on Lecture Talk Series 8 to commemorate International Women's Day with the topic, why become a princess if you become a hero or heroine? Okay, thank you for your, uh, your time here with us today. And uh, today we are going to have us uh, two presenters and I will introduce them to you. But before that, uh, I want to give you an opening, a script before we continue to the presenters today. Talking about International Women's Day, it is a global day celebrating the social, economic, cultural and political achievement of women. Yeah. And it marks a call to action for accelerating gender parity. More significant activity is witnessed worldwide as groups come together to celebrate women's achievement or rally for women's equality. So to commemorate um, International Women's Day on March 8th, uh, women do a lot of activities. Women have uh, the movement uh, for their social, economic, cultural, and even political achievement. Okay, um, there are important days, yeah, uh, for the women itself for today's. We are talking on March 8 here to celebrate women's achievement, raise awareness about women's equality, lobby for accelerated gender parity, and of course, fundraise for female-focused charities. Well, everyone, uh, in this session, if you have a question or clarification related to our today's presenters, feel free to type in in chat box or you can talk directly after the presentation, okay? If by any chance you miss on some important points, don't worry, you can get a copy of file from the presenters. Well, everyone, you can also reach us not only from Zoom, but also via YouTube channel at UPT Bahasa IAIN Madura. Well, for today's, uh, I want to introduce the head of language unit of IAIN Madura, Ibu Eva Nikmatil, Nikmatu Robianti, yeah, as the head of language unit, and also Bapak Abdul Wafi as the host of this program, the Lecture Talk Series 8. And now we are going to have uh, presenters. Yeah. But before that, let's say uh, Basmalah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Well, I want to introduce our first presenter. Yeah. Uh, the first is uh, Ms. Fifin. Yeah. Okay. I want to read the information first related to Ms. Fifin Nofri Nasari. She is a homestay coordinator of Peace Corp Indonesia. She is also a sexual assault response liaison and small grants coordinator. She joined Peace Corps Indonesia in September 
2010 means that it's about 10 years. Prior to that, her experience ranges from teaching English to young learners and adults in both Indonesia and Thailand. After graduating from the English Department of State University of Malang, she volunteered to teach English at elementary school in her hometown in Sidoarjo. She then moved to Bangkok, Thailand to attend an and a program in English language as a teaching assistant, sorry, a teaching at Assumption University. During that period of time, she also worked as a teaching assistant at the same university and as a resource center advisor at the British Council. In 2006, she moved to Sumarang, Central Java, to join UNICEF as a project monitor of CLCC stand for Creating Learning Community for Children Education Program. The program focuses on transparent school management, active and joyful learning, and community participation in primary education. Being involved in development work has been her passion. In her spare time, she enjoys traveling, indoor and outdoor sports such as CrossFit, weightlifting, trail running, hiking, ball climbing, and surfing. Well, please welcome Miss Vivian. Time is yours. Hello, Miss Vivian. Are you okay? Ready for this? Thank you, Miss Lasmi. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Um, so I'm going to need to share my screen. Let me... Please bear with me. Okay, can you? Yeah, I can see your file. You can see my presentation, but I need to start from the first. Okay. Okay, so um, the topic for today's session is why become a princess if we can be a warrior? Um, Can you slide share? Yes. Can you see it? Not yet. At the beginning, I can see it, but now I lost it. Wait a minute. What about now? Not yet. Oh. I must have. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Okay. Can you still see it? Yeah. Yeah. I can see it clearly. Mm -hmm. Great. So uh, my topic for today: Why become a princess if we can be a warrior. There has been a long introduction of me, so no need to introduce myself. Um, and then I have a question for you. What words can be adjectives? What words that come to mind when you hear the word princess and a warrior? A princess and a warrior. If you can, you can type your answer in the chat box, or you can uh, shout it out because I don't think I'm I'm able to see the chat box at the moment. Strong, but, beautiful woman. 
beautiful woman for what a princess uh, I, I choose to be a warrior princess so strong beautiful a woman warrior princess. <laughs> strong and beautiful yeah <laughs> great any others i can i i I don't want to choose now? because sometimes I want to be a princess, but sometimes I need to be a warrior. <laughs> you know what okay. I mean? <laughs> That's smart. Yeah. As a princess, we have to be uh, treated well. A princess is more dependent. A warrior is more independent. Okay. Mm -hmm. a prin the princess is not as strong as a warrior. Okay. Any others? Okay, well, thank you for your responses. So I have a list of uh, some adjectives here. We have masculine, feminine, aggressive, adventurous, assertive, obedient, timid, passive, brave. Um, I think Ibu, Eva is smart enough she want, that she wanted to be um a warrior princess like you know <laughs> but uh but but i i have uh, my own uh okay point of view <laughs> male point of view yes, yes. please I, love you. I, I, I don't want to do the princess need money warrior earn and get money <laughs> Uh, my. Great. Thank you for your contribution. Okay. Any others? So I like that uh, you mentioned the word independent. I will add here independent and also dependent. Well, you know, uh, a lot of people may think that, you know, be, to be a princess, you have to be beautiful. You have a lot of people to take care of you. You don't need to work hard. Yeah. But being a warrior, um, you have to be strong. You have to be brave. You have to be independent. And you guys uh, mentioned them all. So thank you. So I'd like to share with you a result study uh, done by Cats and Girls Leadership in the US. It was done in 2014. Okay, Ibu, Ibu asked me, princess need to be treated well for warrior. We have to give and do more to get to treatment well, okay, yep. So yeah, so the study uh, found that there's a bravery gap. So I'd like to uh, bring this conversation to, to explore more about the word brave and bravery. You can be a princess, you can also be a warrior, but you can be a brave princess too, right? So uh, there's, there's no right or wrong answer to that. But bravery, I think it's important because it's uh, a gateway to something more in your life. If you're brave, you will, there's more opportunities for you to get what you want to achieve your goals and dreams. But uh, a study in the U.S. mentioned that there's a bravery gap between boys and girls, that boys were more likely than girls to say that they were brave. Is it? Do you think it's the same here in Indonesia? Um, yeah. In I Indonesia, so. boys uh, seems look to be braver, and they are uh, or they forced to be braver than than women, right. they, they have to protect women. In other That's, words, they should be braver than, than girls. And girls should be not aggressive, should be timid, should be quiet. Yeah, timid, yeah. Right. So do you know why that things happen? 
So there are two factors that put girls behind when it comes to developing bravery or courage. First is just like what Ibu Eva said, the society expect boys to be brave, to protect, to be courageous, but girls, they should be timid. Mm -hmm. they, should, they should put other people's need before their own. They should play by the rules. They should avoid conflicts or even taking risk. So these are cultural norms or messages that we often hear. Is that so? Does, does this uh, ring true to you, Ibu Ibu, when you were yeah. growing up or even yeah. when you are raising your girls and your boys? Yeah. So yeah. this uh, has be. a lot to do on gender roles and expectations, especially uh, in our patriarchal society. And the second um, factor that put girls behind uh, the boys when it comes to developing courage is um, a bigger is better culture. Um, people think that, you know, being brave, you have to do something wow, something big, something that is heroic. And only 18% of teen girls in the, in the States that uh, in the study define brave as standing up for their beliefs and being honest about who they are. So I'd like us to think that being brave doesn't have to be big. It can be from small things and we have to celebrate small wins, whatever it is. We'll, we'll go deeper into that. So what can be an example, and uh, I understand you are all in the area of education, right? So this is an example of uh, gender roles and expectation in a classroom setting. Being male means aggressive. masculine, aggressive. We can we we tend to tolerate more. Uh, more of that in the classroom when it comes when it's boys so oh it's boys will be boys is expected the behaviors can be they're willing to try new activities they are not afraid to build new skills they practice expressing ideas and opinion they become class leader they're active participating in class dis discussion and answering questions but the risk is uh, they, can, they can be overconfident, they don't observe or learn from other experiences or may not take time to analyze question or assignment. On the contrary, for, for feminine, for female students, we tend to associate them with being feminine, being timid, being quiet. quiet. Good students, they are quiet, they don't ask questions, they don't respond well. Or maybe they rely on others for opinion. Maybe you see students look at each other before answering a question from the teacher. That means they're not confident, right? They hesitate to try new skills. They're shy. Um, they don't want to do things alone. I remember in my school years, um, girls are often, you know, hang out or go out with another female student. For example, going to the bathroom, they rely on, they will wait or they will ask the female friend to go with them. This is also cultural. I don't say that this is wrong, but I think this is also partly cultural because they want to be safe. And then, but the risk is they can be seen as underachieving, uh, their talent may not be recognized if they're too shy, or they can be labeled as uh, not active, and they can risk dropping out of school. So that's just uh, an example in classroom setting. But we have, I'm sure we have a lot of examples. Um, looking back, when we grow up uh, in the past, but the good thing is being brave is a skill. Um, uh, it's, we can learn to be brave 
over time. I'm not, I was not born brave. In fact, um, when I was young, my parents won't let me, I mean, as soon as I reach uh, teenage years, they don't allow me to join Pramuka anymore because of the expectation of, you know, there have to be camp that I had to spend nights away from them. It's for safety and security reasons. So I don't blame them, but some, somehow I, right now I feel that it's limiting. Maybe you can relate, maybe you can't, but that was my personal experience. I learned to be brave only just recently, uh, less than 10 years even, like probably say eight, eight years ago, that was when I learned to be brave. So brave is, you're not born with it. It's a skill and it is built. So you have to give opportunities for girls, girls to practice bravery uh, and over time they can develop confidence to tackle bigger challenges just like uh, practicing basketball football violin and other and any other skills can so, i ask something yes please yes please okay i'm curious with your statement here being a brave is a skill yeah and you yes. said that you recently become a brave, right? Yes. Less than 10 years, you said. Yes. Um, I think you have a certain reason why you should be brave. Uh, can you give us a reason why do you have to be brave? I'm curious uh, for that reason. I have to be brave because at that time I have to rely on myself. And I have the freedom and opportunity to practice that. I tried uh, new things that I haven't tried before, just like <clears throat> sports. I get into sport eight years ago. I never imagined in my life that I would run 5K at that time. But after four years, I finished a full marathon. I travel. Oh, wow. A big, big wow. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, wow. I, I started to travel and sometimes I travel alone. I travel solo to Europe in 2017. Mm -hmm. I, and then mostly I travel solo. Uh, when I go abroad and yeah, I also try new things like serving, um, weightlifting and CrossFit. And interestingly, even though I'm at that age, my father still likes to uh, tell me, why do you have to do that? Yeah. It's dangerous for women. Why don't you try the sport that is safe for girls or women like what like yoga like so it's like a stereotype that you know you sh girls should Stick do only on. this kind of sports but not that kind of sport uh, they say that girl cannot have muscle girls cannot have muscle <laughs> oh my they, god they should burn fat but don't have to muscle. have muscle I wonder why. I wonder why they cannot. I mean, yeah. who said yeah. that? <laughs> Man. <laughs> and then um, in 2018, I started a new um, passion that is hiking. Wow. Within that year, a period of time, or maybe was it 2019? It was just two years ago. Wow. Within that time, I have no. climbed um maybe five or six mountain including Sumeru, the highest peak of java yeah so, 
Do you yes. still remember Ida Rahayu? Ida Rahayu? Ida, Ida. She was uh-huh, uh-huh. jongring, uh, jongring, uh, like climbing right, a lot. Right. But, but yeah, but now she's a great uh, salsa dancer. So it, it's a little bit contradictive with you. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah. Well, in my university years, I remember I was so quiet. I didn't even join any um, UKM. UKM or extracurricular <laughs> activities. I always go home, went home every weekend to meet my parents. But here I am now. I feel like I'm late, but I don't regret it. So it, does that answer your question, Miss Lasmi? Yeah, okay. That's a very great experiences. And uh, perhaps it can be motivated for us. Yeah, why we have as a woman here to be brave. Sometimes yeah. we are afraid to do something. Sometimes sometime we are afraid to say something uh, out of box, right? That's why yes. brief is really uh, needful for us. Yeah, you, yeah, I agree with you that being a brief is a skill, not war, but we have to make it, right? Right. Thank you. And it's never too late Yeah. to learn that, no you matter right. where we are right now. Okay, so yeah. thank you. you're welcome. So what do girls need in order to be brave? Girls learn best from the role models. They look up to their parents, their teachers, the people that they have uh, respect for. So I'm calling on each and every one of you. You are teachers, you are individuals to embrace micro bravery so that we can model and teach it to our girls. So because when we model micro bravery, we provide two core components that girls need to develop, uh, to develop the, the courage. First is the script. They learn from us the words, the sentences that we use when we practice a, a bravery. And we give them permission that they can do that too. The opportunities are endless. You can uh, do it at home, at school, in your office, everywhere, uh, everywhere you go. For example, like making eye contact, raising our hand to ask questions during class or during a meeting, saying no, making complaint. Do you have any other examples? Yeah, like like what you just said that trying new thing. Right. Yeah. Try new things. So get out of your comfort zones. Girls, we tend to live in our protective protective bubbles created by our parents, created by the society. Um, but sometimes we need to let them experience bravery so that they're not lack or they're not behind the other male or the, the boys. Sorry, Miss Vivian. Yes. I want to greet uh, other speakers, the international speakers. We have uh, Miss Vasileku Evangelia. Hello, Miss Vasileku. <coughs> Are you here? Yes, of course, I'm here. Hello, greetings from Greece. Yeah, yeah, greetings from Indonesia. Good afternoon from here. Okay, now we are- Good morning from on... here. We have a five hour difference. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm Lasmi actually. And uh, for today's session, uh, we are now having Miss Vivin to have a presentation. Yes. Perhaps after Miss Vivin, you will have your part to give your presentation. Of course, sure. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. Sorry. Yeah, go on, Miss Vivian. Okay, thank you. So what possibility that exists at the end of your comfort zones? Ask yourself. And what potential could you discover if you're willing to risk failure? Try new things it, it doesn't always, uh, it's not always easy, 
you have to be brave to to admit that you you suck at that new things that you need to learn and improve more there are still a lot of rooms for you to improve and to grow but i can share you some tips if it helps you first everyone's brave is different my comfort zone is of course different than yours what makes me feel nervous is different from yours what makes me proud will also be different from what will make you proud. So let's not try to compare each other, but we must encourage girls and also adults to respect everyone's right to define their own brave. And second, you can brainstorm any places that you can practice micro bravery. It can be in your house, it can be in the classroom, you can draw a map of the places you spend time, maybe your school, your university, sport field, anywhere. And you can write or draw uh, your micro bravery opportunities. And if you're a teacher, I'm sure most of us here are, uh, we can start a conversation in class about what brave mean. And of course, I will also encourage you to bring this conversation to your home, to your family. You can challenge your students or your children to debate whether bravery can be big, small, or both. You can have them provide examples. Uh, you can ask them about, you know, of some figure in the history or, or their own life who they think are brave. Any questions from here? Yeah, perhaps any question from the participants? Come on, you can have your question here directly to Ms. Vivian. Or if you are shy, just uh, write it down in chat. Yeah, you can type it in the chat box as well. And then, so yeah, so brave, it's not about what we do. It's also about what we believe. We need to change the way girls define courage and uh, so that they feel that they can do it. That will make them brave. Mm -hmm. That can make them enjoy um, the new things that they want to try. So they can practice it on their own terms and yeah, and at their own pace. We cannot force it upon them because bravery is just the beginning. Um, so I think we're almost at the end of my presentation. I recommend three books if you are interested to read more about uh, giving opportunities for girls to be brave or to experience uh, risky play. 50 Dangerous Things, um, paperback published in 2011. Mm -hmm. Rat Woman Worldwide, also published recently in 2016, and The Gutsy Girls, Gutsy Girls. Uh, published in 2016. You can uh, contact me if you need more info about that. I will. So, <clears throat> before I end my presentation, if you have questions or comments, or I can give <laughs> you some questions as well. <laughs> I'd, like to, I'd like to know the three things that you learn from this session. You can type it in the chat box and also type what's your micro brave. Okay, well, all the participants. Yeah, Ms. Sifin asked you to write it down. Uh, the three things that you have learned from the session, and then you can find out what's your micro brief there. Yeah, please type it on chat box, or if you want to say directly, just uh, mute, unmute your phone. Microphone, I mean. Come on. 
let's have with the Alfian maybe V3. Or perhaps we can have any question from YouTube channel, ma'am. Okay. Yes. Let me check. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Let me check. Uh, not yet. There is no questions yet Everyone from there. Uh, can Can I ask questions before I answer your questions? Yes. Please. Miss, Miss yes. Okay. Um, we are teaching in in a institutions where uh, the base of our institution is Islamic. And um, right. yeah, and most of the students comes from local area of, of, of Madura. And you know that Madura is, is old, uh, what is it, strongly the patriarchy system and uh, based on to the Islamic values. And um, even though this is not actually uh, Islam's really uh, support the uh, gender equality between men and women, uh, actually, that's. Um, but uh, in fact, uh, in the practice, it, it is not that way. So, do you have any suggestion for us teaching here uh, to 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 have a method or material that? more gender uh, responsive to a high um, student, higher education students. Dealing with, uh, what is it, the, the base of our students, Islamic, and they, they, they raise in Madrid's culture. Uh, Vivian, we have, we have a saying here in, in Madura, Aba? Ngakan tak ngakan sepenting kepolong bener ya? Yeah, so that's why Maduri sometimes uh, like what you said, gak boleh ikut apa, uh, you cannot take that job because you will go abroad or you will stay far from your family. Just uh, take another job that can make you stay with your family, nearer to your family. So that's kind of culture sometimes make... Um, our students or women in 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 Madura that come from Madura, like, like having the limitations of uh, choosing their professions. So, what do you think about that? Thank you for the question, Ibu Eva. Uh, mm -hmm. That is really um, a social reality that we have in mm -hmm. the patriarchal society. I was caught in the middle of your question, but I hope I capture the essence of your questions. You asked um, how we could help or, uh, you asked about my opinion mm -hmm. on um, the Islamic culture and also the regional culture that prevent girls to move places to go somewhere far or reach their dream is that your question yeah 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 that's the question okay um i think the issue is not um uncommon we also have the same uh experience across indonesia yeah in in java too is um but i think parents i think we need to be open-minded we need to you to uh to treat the children equally boys and girls and provide them with the same opportunities and we need to think this because this is how we're going to prepare them for real life, they need to be independent. And what do they need to be independent? They need to be resourceful. They need to be brave. They need to have what it takes to be independent. Mm -hmm. And regarding 
the cultural background, I think there are a lot of examples of brave female Muslims in mm -hmm. uh, Nabi Muhammad era, for example. Yeah. Right? Like and Siti Hatija and Aisha. Yeah, you're right. Right. So yeah. you can provide examples that can that the parents or everyone can relate that is based on their uh, religious belief. So it's not something far from their values. Does that make sense? Yeah, it really makes sense. But um, when we teach uh, adult, because they already, as you said that, um, because of the culture, they, they live uh, with that culture, they educate that way. And then when they reach higher educations, like here in university, seems for us, it, it do not easy to change, to change their uh, mindset already. So, right. yeah, so we I, need think, mm -hmm. I think uh, in my uh, two cents, I can give you my two cents. Is mm -hmm. give as many examples as you can that can support our views that women need to be independent. Mm -hmm. Show examples of strong women that they can that can be a role model or show examples of women who needs to survive alone in this life. There are a lot of examples like single moms, uh, yeah. Ibu Susi, maybe if you want to make <laughs> her a role model. Um, and the teachers, everyone who are in the, who have their own career, who, it doesn't have to be, I mean, you can see from the smallest examples, like when you go to the traditional market, who control the economy in the traditional market? Who are the majority of uh, gender working in that area? So they're all working mothers, working women who who wants who, who wants to be independent, who wants to support the family. They're all heroes. They're all warriors. So all these small things uh, can be a good example to show that women need to be independent. Confidence. And confidence, of course. Confidence, yeah. yeah I, I think we need to, uh, because sometimes the problem is when, for example, sorry to say, like uh, sexual harassment or sexual right. abuse, that because sometimes uh, the 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 female or the woman uh, do not have bravery enough. They do not brave enough to say no or right. refuse because they're afraid yes. uh, being, uh, what is it, being... Uh, Left, left. Other people. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. So I think confidence also one of the key word. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It takes practice, uh, but it's not impossible. To yeah. Do. That's why brave is is skills. I really agree with that. So skills need practice. Always. Right. Thank you. Yeah, I want to say a little bit about what you have said, Miss Supin. You did a single mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there is a question from my uh, my cousin, not my cousin, my husband's cousin. Uh, he is a son of um, a single parent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he asked about how should we appreciate a single parent woman? Is it effective enough if in the future there is a policy that prioritizes single parent women in finding work or indistinguishable from other women? I mean, another, another woman that has a full, complete family there? Uh -huh. That's a really yeah. good question. Yeah. How we can mm -hmm. prioritize single mom to, to get a job Com compared yeah. to, right, that's a really good question and good thinking. Um, 
I don't have the answer right now, but as far as my experience goes, um, when we want, when, when it is about a job application or applying for a job or competing for a job, mm -hmm. ideally we don't see any, any background for example, the religion, sexuality, uh, marital status, the number of children they have. If we want to be fair, we have to leave all those identity behind to see who the person who is really suitable for, for the job. But that's my experience. Uh, yeah, it's similar if, to it's, the experiences, the working experiences, yeah, mm -hmm. Not about the background of the mm -hmm. woman itself. But if you, but, but this is uh, based on my experience, but if someone wants to, you know, uh, set up an NGO um, mm -hmm. or work with single moms in um, an economic sector, that will be great, like to give more opportunities for them to work. Oh, when you yeah. have you, you make your own criteria, <laughs> set up uh, your own organization, institution, or or economic initiative. Yeah, <laughs> yeah? create jobs. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's one of um, a start. Uh, a warrior actually the real warrior yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> okay yeah from for the other participant we have 18 participants here perhaps you wanna uh, ask to miss we a little bit to this uh, session perhaps uh from uh the students but axelani perhaps or others but we three uh, I noticed some entry in the chat box. Mm -hmm. uh, Ibu Lasni, you mentioned that Brave is built. Uh, we should learn a new things that is out of the box. Um, that everyone has different type of courage or bravery. And then, so thank you for mentioning that. And three things. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. Those are the three questions that you mentioned. And then from Ibu Eva, is that you, right? Who, who typed in the chat box? <laughs> oh, that's it, Papa Pak Wafi. Um, that woman should be brave enough to try new things and we need to be confident. Yeah, okay, perhaps Mbak Rika, Nur Safitri, come on. Uh, perhaps you have an idea related to the woman, as we know that the woman uh, is rather, what's that, doesn't have more powerful than man, but we are trying to have, uh, to have more, more action than man, yeah, since we have a certain reason, we can have it, okay, come on, Mbak Rika, Mbak Sajida, or... Yes, please. Uh, Miss Ak Solani, you can ask a question. Yeah. Um, can you hear my voice? Hello. Can you speak louder? Can you hear my voice? Uh, louder, please. Um, can you hear my voice? Yeah. Um, That's clear enough. I am interesting to your sentence about being brave is a skill. Can you give the solution to the parent who doesn't understand their daughter's brave skill? Every time their parents give upper protection and thinks that they, their daughter is not brave enough, so they can't get so many experience out there. Right. Thank you, Miss Aksolani, for the yeah. questions. I think I can relate to your question and your experience. 
parents tend to be more over uh, overprotective to the daughters compared to the boys. Um, but I think, as I have mentioned earlier, you can invite your parents to have a dialogue, to have a conversation, to so that you can give them your reasons, the values behind uh, your requests or your proposal to do something or to go somewhere. You have to make them trust you. When you, when they give you, when you want them to give them that trust, you don't want to break the trust. And you can give examples as well. Uh, so try to reason with them. And I hope they understand. You give a lot of examples, I would say, or yeah, any other thoughts? Yeah, yeah, I do agree with you. Perhaps by giving an example and then prove it and make them trust. It's a uh, one way how to, uh, what's that? How to prove that we can make it, yeah. Is that like that, Miss Vivian? Yes. Yeah. Small talk is very needed between uh, the daughter and the parents, of course. Right. I have the same issue um, growing up my overprotective parents because I'm uh, I was an only child mm -hmm. uh, when I uh, since high school and but early on I knew I knew from then that, that if I wanted to grow if I wanted to succeed I need to get out of my bubble I need to get out of my comfort zone that is home I need to get out of my home <laughs> I, uh, after, so I grew up with my parents. I stayed with them until high school. Mm. Uh, after that, I got accepted to three different universities. Two are were in Surabaya and one in Malang. And Malang is my getaway. I chose uh -huh. the farthest. So that's how I practice my micro bravery. Malang is not too far away, but still, it's an experience that I got to get to enjoy because of that and you have to be persistent you have to be resilient and you have to sh sh let them know that they can trust you that you can you can do it yeah yeah and that's yeah. why your outdoor sport is the climbing <laughs> in that's <Malang>. just recently <laughs> yeah yeah, perhaps, Bob Solani, do you have more questions or clarification? Perhaps you still need to talk a lot related to what you have in your mind related to bravery here with your parents, Bob Solani, you can, or others. Yeah, you, you can talk to Ibu Eva and get my contact if you need to uh, discuss more about this. Yeah. Well, how about others? I guess uh, we have a uh, second speaker, ma'am, Gulasmi. Okay, yeah. Uh, um, well, uh, we all have a uh, happy second speaker here with Ms. Um, Priscilla Co. Evangelia. I'm so sorry if I mispronounced for your name here. Uh, but before that, thank you very much for uh, Ms. Pippin. If uh, the participant has many more questions, perhaps. Uh, you can contact us to find out uh, more about Ms. Pippin's contact number so that you can ask more about what you have in your mind. Okay, thank you very much for Ms. Pippin. Uh, perhaps we can have a nice event for upcoming events here, not only in this session. Thank you and, so much. Yeah. And now we come to the second speaker here with Ms. Fasilako Evangelia. Are you here, Miss? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, I'm Lasmi here. I'm uh, one of the lecturers in EIN Madura. Nice to have nice to meet you here. Yeah. My pleasure to be with you. Thank you yeah. very much for your invitation as well. Oh, yeah. 
Thank you very much. But before that, I want to read uh, in the personal information related to our second presenter here. Uh, she is uh, from Greek, and um, there are a lot of achievements that she got from the academic education. She is a Bachelor of Art in Philosophy at okay. College, the American College of Greece. And then um, uh, he also, uh, she also do a peer reviewing in some of uh, international journal here. And she got a lot, the certificate of appreciation on social service. And uh, there are many award and achievement uh, related to education leadership and then writing competition. Wow, that's, that will be great. And she also has the tutorial experiences to some, uh, what's that, journal, yeah? ELD News is you. For the academic journals, he also, she also become an editorial board membership. And for the latest one here, um, at uh, honorary editorial board member of Global Research and Development Journals. GRD journals. Okay, that would be great. Yeah. And for the working experience, um, you are an instructor yeah, for academic English at Metropolitan College, Merosi campus, right? And from 2019 to present. But before that, you have a lot of working experience, of course. And you also join the specialized courses that is teaching English for specific purpose. And you also become, uh, become a presenter or speakers to some conferences, forums, or even a webinar. And today, uh, you are going to have presentations in our, uh, what's that program? Lecture Talk Series 8 with the topic here is, why become a princess if, if you become a warrior? Okay. Uh, it's because we are commemorating International Women's Day on March 8th. So this topic come up, yeah. Uh, perhaps I, that's all for uh, introducing our presenter today, but actually she has a lot of experience with it to teacher trainers and invitation also, and also with the workshop, right? And also you have also experience in conference Proceeding. Wow. You are so inspired, ma'am. <laughs> Dedicated to the field. We're trying to contribute as much as possible. Okay. Well, uh, since the time is uh, so limited for us, uh, it's better for us to go directly to the presenter. Please welcome okay. Ms. Uh, Fisi, uh, I'm sorry for the Evangelia. So let me share. Let me share my screen. Yeah, please welcome. Thank you. Time is yours. Am I visible and audible? Yes. Yeah. Okay. One of the biggest dilemmas nowadays is. What is the definition for the first century woman? What identity we could find for her that fits best? In other words, it's the question, why become a princess if you can be a warrior or the vice versa? Why become a warrior if you can be a princess? Let's have a look at what does it mean to be a princess, first of all. Does it have to do with the dreamy world of a princesshood? Or is it about the flowery delicacy of veiled frailty? Well, princesses are beautifully shown and they seem to have a rather unrealistic image, which I would call perfect. But being a princess is not only about the royalty status, it's not only about wearing a glittery tiara or a gorgeous dress, it's also about becoming a role model. 
Let me uh, introduce you to the 20 real life princesses from around the world. The reason I selected them was just to show the real essence of princehood. The list is long. I just have selected 20 of these. Let me refer to the names out of respect. We have the Princess of Bhutan, the Princess of Norway, the Princess of Venice and Piedmont, the Princess of Jordan, Princess of Bulgaria, Princess of Monaco, Princess of Luxembourg, Princess of Thailand, of Sweden, the Crown Princess of Denmark, of Akisino, of Cambodia, of Belgium, of York, of Swaziland, Saudi Arabia, Edinburgh, the Netherlands, Cambridge, the Duchess of Cambridge, and the Duchess of Sussex. The most important thing is to understand that princehood in the modern era has nothing to do with the princehood as it has been portrayed in our fairy tales. That's why I have called it a conceptual framework. It has to do with the ideology, the rationale, and the mentality below that. For me, princehood is kindness, values, humanitarianism, high education, goals, freedom of will, freedom of choice, motherhood, parenting, sharing with a companion, quality, work and responsibilities, and any kind of modernism in the expression. Why do I say these? Let's see. I have decided to select some of these women because of time restrictions. So I would start with the Princess of Bhutan, uh, Shimi Yankos uh, Wanchuk, excuse me if uh, I pronounce the names wrongly. Uh, she's a dedicated student, that's a brief bio, having completed her BA degree in international relations and economics and MA degree in public administration from US universities. That's why I talked about quality education. We move on to Martha Louise, the, the princess of Norway. She's the only daughter of King Harald V and Queen Sonja and is currently fourth in line to the Norwegian throne. She's married and lives in London with her partner and three daughters. That's why I mentioned before, she's a mother, the notion of motherhood and companionship. Astrid, the princess of Belgium, She's the second child of King Albert II and Queen Paula. The Princess Astrid is both royal and charitable. She's a, strong, she's a strong advocate of medical research and the chairwoman of the Belgian Red Cross. She spends most of her time parenting and fighting for the new global era, the epidemics, as well as domestic violence. That's why I talked about humanitarianism. Another profile is of the Princess of Swaziland, she, uh, Sheik Manisio uh, Lamini, one of a massive family. She's the first of King's 30 children. From the first of his 10 wives, she's known as the principal princess. And she has had uh, an, a, a controversy about the sense of justice. She has a very strong sense of justice. That's why we can call her a, prince, a modern princess operating, uh, present on social media, uh, talking uh, uh, away, I would say uh, she's away from the notion of traditional dresses and she's performing as both an actress and a rapper. That's why I talked about freedom of choice and will. Another profile is about the princess of Saudi Arabia, Amira Al-Tawil. She's the wife to Prince and graduate of New Haven University with a degree in business administration and a very hardworking woman. She's humanitarian, focused both on Saudi Arabia and around the world. That's why I talked about humanitarianism. And most importantly, this princess is also the vice chair of a nonprofit organization and the supporter for women's rights in Saudi Arabia. Now, I would like to refer to Laura Thatcher, who is the 300th anniversary university professor at Harvard University, who inspired me by writing her book entitled Well-Behaved Women Seldom Make History and how am I supposed to relate this today? First of all, let me tell you that uh, she wrote the book in 1976 and it was about the pious women of colonial New England. 
she added this phrase, well-behaved women seldom make history. And she immediately gained widespread currency because these words appear almost everywhere nowadays. You can see them on, it's like a slogan, t-shirts, mags, plaques, greeting cards, and many others. But why do I mention these and what do they really mean? She went far beyond the slogan because she actually created and explored what it means to make history. And now I would like to pose the question and why she inspired me. What are the most ideal waves of feminism for the 21st century woman? What are the female waves of change in the feminist history? I have selected some, there are many. I have selected the ecofeminism, the global feminism, and the visionary feminism. Let me start with the ecofeminism. This form of feminism views patriarchy and all this idea of hegemony and control and domination and prevalence, not only as the source of women's oppression, but also as harmful to humanity and destructive, with a destructive power to all the living creatures on the earth. So if we combine a more detailed analysis of power with a greater spiritual vision, the ecofeminists see women's rights and all the empowerment linked to the political perspective, economic, social, and cultural factors. Because in that way, if we see them holistically, they can benefit all the living creatures and nature as well. The nature sustainability, in other words. Now, moving on to the global feminism, it's an approach to feminism that concerns about the globalization and capitalism effects. In other words, how people are uh, influenced across nationalities, races, ethnicities, genders, classes, and sexualities, and how these uh, pictures can be impacted by the global movements. It acknowledges all the inequalities and the asymmetries in power across the different groups of women, and this importance of intersectionality, because it's a good way to understand and conceptualize the differences. In a nutshell, this vision understands the need for global movements in order to ensure long-term social and deep transformation. About the visionary feminism, it is seen uh, actually in the many writings of the African and American feminists as an emphasis to the necessity to challenge and doubt patriarchy, the race and other forms of oppression or imperialism and corporate control. But what is very important, and I really liked here, is the fact that it focuses on love and the role of men. For them, visionary feminism is a wise and loving politics. It is deeply rooted in the love of male and female being. So the soul of this feminist approach and of this feminist ideology, the tactics, is the commitment to end the patriarchal domination of women and men, and even girls and boys, who start earlier. Love cannot exist in any relationship that is based on domination and coercion. Males cannot love themselves if they are raised in a patriarchal culture and ideology. And it is this self-definition that relies on submission to all the patriarchal dominance. So when men embrace and actually uh, connect with this feminist thinking and practice, that uh, puts emphasis on the real value of mutuality and growth in both sexes, then this kind of self-awareness or the so-called self-actualization in world relationships can be possible. And not only possible and feasible, but also in a position to be ameliorated and enhanced. I would like now to move on to the historical perspective and refer to some fearsome female fighters who really made their history in the course of history, their mark on history. Artemisia was the fifth century queen of Helicarnassus. You see here, we talk about warriors and queen at the same time. However, she was best known as a naval commander and ally of Xerxes, the king of Persia, in the invasion of the Greek city-states. She made her a presence very important in the Battle of Salamis, where the fleet she commanded was deemed the best against the Greeks. 
The Greek historian Herodotus wrote of her heroics on this battlefield of the sea, and he pictured her as a warrior who was very, very, very decisive and extremely intelligent because she implemented various strategies. About John of the of Ark, she was another great female warrior because by the age of 17, she played a very dominant role in commanding the Francis army and her power was evident in the military. She seems to be famous for her strategy over slaying and the French owed a lot to her profile. Another woman warrior was Grace O'Malley, a 16th century warrior woman and an Irish pirate, also a queen. And she got her nickname, Grand Male, derived from a tale of teenage rebellion. This actually justifies about the slogan we said before that women who did not have a say in the final analysis did not make history. Zenobia became the ruler of uh, the Palmyrene Empire that lived in what is now Syria. And within two years only of her ascent to the throne, she was battling back the advances of Rome and expanding the boundaries of her kingdom by power, invading not only Egypt, but also Anatolia. And moving on to Greek mythology, let's discuss Xena. Xena is a fictional character that was created for television series. It doesn't matter, but it comes from the Greek mythology. So this series was based on various myths of ancient Greece, and these myths were adapted in order to fit the scenario. If we try not to synthesize pastness with nowness, the big question that arises is, who could they be today? All these warriors in, history, in the historic course and even in TV series, if we try to find a representative model, who could they be today? I would say with certainty, they could be leaders, politicians, activists, passionate visionaries, martial arts instructors, army officers, police women, judges, manager, to name but a few. Because these are female personalities that if we look around us, we will see them all around the world. And they do not only inspire their community, but they have the power to inspire a whole nation. What I call to go the extra mile. So the answer to my initial question, why become a warrior if I can become a princess or vice versa, is not to select between the two, is to synthesize and to look for the perfect match up. It could be an ideal match up to be both a synthesis. So my definition, which is a symbiotic mutualistic relationship about the 21st century, 21st century identity is what I call a virago aristocrat woman. In other words, a warrior princess. <laughs> Thank you very much for being such an attentive audience. Well, thanks a lot. Yeah, it's a very informative, inspiring explanation. Yeah, you mentioned the previous warrior and also uh, the princess at the same time, not only a warrior, but also a princess also. And now exactly. we have another model, right? Another model mm -hmm. of warrior, not, uh, not, if I mention one of the example from your explanation, uh, it's about a fictional character like Sina you mentioned. I have watched it, yeah, when I got uh, in, uh, in my kindergarten, I watch it, ma'am, actually. This movie, and I also okay. follow this kind of fictional character, and it's a very, what's that, strong woman that I know. Yeah, thanks a lot for your information. Thanks a lot for your uh, explanation. Perhaps from the participants here, uh, do you have a question related to those explanation? That's a very outstanding explanation from Miss Evangelia here. Uh, if I'm allowed, if I'm allowed, let me uh, rephrase your uh, statement. Well, it doesn't actually have to be a question. It could be an observation. Uh -huh. It could be it could be comments regarding what do they believe, if they agree 
if they think it is a synthesis or if they think that uh, we should focus on a monodimensional aspect, only being a warrior or only be a woman. Yeah. It could be any comment. Yeah, yeah. perhaps uh, we can have uh, any comments related to those uh, statements related to why we have to be a princess if we can become a warrior. And like Miss Evangelia said that why we should be a warrior but uh, we're warrior, not only becoming a princess. Why we? Why not becoming a, both of them? I mean, as a princess and also a warrior, or perhaps we can be a warrior queen. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them were. Most of um, them were. As you saw. Well, last minute, so you can ask uh, audiences to give comment. Yeah. As, can can uh, I say Can please? I say something? Yeah, we're yeah. Of course. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I'm here at your disposal. <laughs> okay, Ibu uh, Evangelia Fasilaku, thank you very much uh, oh. for um, presenting today and receiving our invitations. I'm the head of uh, this language center who held this uh, event. Thank you very much for uh, receiving our invitations. My pleasure, was, my pleasure. Yeah, it was such a great uh, presentation and um, I would like to, what is it, answer uh, your first at your first slide you say uh, whether you want to be uh, what why become a princess if we can be a warrior or in the vice versa so mm -hmm. let, let in my personal opinion um, it is also stated by you through your presentations that um, the the choice is in us but whatever the choice that we we choose we uh, we have to responsible with that. For example, like I'm a working mom, so I have uh, I have four four sons, and uh, my husband also work. So uh, sometimes, um, what is it? We we have to share uh, responsibilities to taking care of the four sons uh, and the. The, the responsibilities the responsibilities that we have to uh, share with our students and it is not easy yeah we 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 really uh what is it working hard to cope with that kind of problems and yeah we are here and as long as as far as this uh we can we can uh, solve all the the problems even though it means that when a woman decide to to be a mom and also to 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 what is to be a, a career woman it means we seems that we have more loaded um or double loaded so like we have more responsibilities seems that we have more responsibilities than men that is happening uh, more, because, more multitasking in other words yeah more multitasking, multitasking more multitasking than Man, same, because I live in a culture where a uh, man is superior than a uh, woman. Yeah. yeah, because I raise that way. So since I already receive received the double loaded in me because I choose to be a working mom. So I have to responsible with that. So I have to bear with all the uh, the things, which is maybe some person think that is too heavy, but because the culture raised me that way, it seems okay. Now, uh, Mrs. Evangelia is ra is raised in Europe, is it? Uh, I come from Greece. Yes, I'm Greek, but yeah, uh, Greek. but your reality is very close to my reality. I'm a mother. Oh, of really? Three. I'm a mother so, of three, exactly, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I work, I have two jobs. Yeah, two jobs. So I, I, I can really sympathize with you. I can, I can mm -hmm. really feel what you're telling mm -hmm. me now, like what you're yeah. sharing right now. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and I think that uh, we are what we let others believe about us. Yeah. Uh -huh. If we really believe that uh, other people are superior uh -huh. to us, we're mm -hmm. going to behave like this, and we mm -hmm. give them the room to do so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, what about the, the, the culture? Uh, here what is in it? Greece. Yeah, here. 
Uh, yes. Is it patriarchal like we are here in Indonesia? I, ha I have already answered. It, it has to do with the way the woman sees yeah. it. Yeah. For mm. example, um, I would say that it's not only in Greece. I would say that this patriarchal, patriarchal notion mm. is global. That's mm. why we talk about uh, a feminist uh, ideology. Mm. And uh, there, as I said before, there are many, many, many uh, types of feminism. I'm not in favor of the radical feminism. I'm not in favor of uh, women seeing men as uh, enemies because they are not. Mm. Um, that's why I mentioned the ideal waves for me, the ideal waves that would uh, help the 21st century identity of all women. It has to do with how we view ourselves, at least here in Greece. I would say it is less patriarchal than other nations, than other countries. But still, there is, a, there is this kind of lane that exists in all countries. There is a dose of patriarchal attitude and asymmetry of power in all nations, in all countries, all over the world. Mm. Um, we, can't, we can't change this. What we can change is, is their perceptions, the way they view women. Mm. Uh, and this can be changed, not radically, this can be changed by our actions. As I said before, some women have outperformed men, and this is a reality. So mm. actions speak louder than words. Mm. Why should I go out and campaign and start mm. saying women are more superior when I'm here and I can show to people that in some things, not sub superior, I wouldn't use that word. In some things, uh, I can function better. And in, in other things, you can supplement me. So if we stop talking about hierarchy, then everything would be ideal in this world. So here in Greece, to answer your question and recap recapitulate, because I don't want to uh, take most of your time, it's your uh, show now, it's your session now to ask and uh, raise uh, a reasonable skepticism. I would say that here in Greece, things are better, but not ideal for me. There is still uh, prejudice, there is still uh, the idea that the woman has to stay at home and raise uh, children and do the housework. And to tell you the truth, when I, now that uh, I'm, I'm so active, I get complaints from my family. Why we don't see you? Why do you spend so much time? Because I have to, because that's what I have decided to do. So mm. through constructive dialogue and through actions, you can show that this is me, this is my identity. And I think things are going to change slowly, gradually, and you can establish your identity in a very diplomatic and nice way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's so very great. Yeah. Well, ask me, hello, ask me. I agree. Me. Yeah, hello? but okay. Uh, let me give my uh, personal opinion as a man. Male. Male. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, yeah. I, uh, I, I tried to find out you, but uh, I don't know. Where are you? <laughs> okay, here, here, here. Okay. okay. Um, he, was many he, was him. he was preparing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Mrs. Uh, Fasilako, thank you very much uh, for being with us. And uh, I'm a man and I have two uh, children. And I try to feel what women feel because I'm women protector. And my wife is a male protect, I mean protector. Because if uh, I protect my woman, but my woman does not protect me, so I will be burned down as well. So male and female should uh, work together side by side and then help one another. This is not about women, this is not about men, but this is about us. That's what I wanna say. And uh, you know, I have a sister, I have a sister. My sister got, not, not really got divorced, but uh, I mean, her husband got married uh, again. So my, my, my sister uh, is abandoned. And um, previously, my sister, uh, you know, because my sister uh, got married in early age, so uh, she doesn't have jobs. She just stayed home, uh, becoming, uh, you know, a housewife. And for 17 years, everything is okay because uh, her husband is okay. 
but uh, after 17 years, there is something happened. There is another woman come to uh, my brother-in-law's uh, uh, life. So, uh, I mean, my brother-in-law abandoned my, my sister. And what, what I see from my sister is that uh, she was like uh, going crazy because uh, she's not prepared in such kind of the situation. But when uh, she was with uh, her husband, everything is fine because uh, husband uh, is working for money. And uh, my sister, I mean, she's a wife and stay at home, raise uh, children. But, uh, you know, life is, is, is totally different when uh, they got uh, divorced, something like that. So my sister has to raise, uh, raise up and then stand by, uh, I mean, uh, her life, uh, uh, taking care of her life. So I feel, I really feel that it is so hard for her to 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 run that life. But now everything is gonna, I mean, it's, it's fine because I used to to accompany her to, to, support her. That, to support her. What I want to say in this case is that this is not about male and female, but this is about us. As long as we can respect one another and then support one another. So I guess there is no victim in this case. Uh, there is no victim in this case. Uh, there is no uh, princess. There is no warrior. Sometimes we 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 are we we male. We we are we are male also. We want to be like a prince. We want to be treated. We want to you know <laughs> my wife come to me and then uh, prepare uh, food and then uh, okay, <laughs> we want that too. But you need to be pampered. In other words, that was my next point. I would like to. <laughs> I wanted to make. Okay, okay, okay. My next point. Okay, so so that I want to say that there is no, uh, you know, male and female. But hierarchy. Uh, there is no hierarchy. Yeah, hierarchy. That's why I'm, I'm interested in that point. Thank you very much. Uh, it was lovely to hear from uh, Ayman, uh, the, the masculine uh, voice, as I call it. <laughs> uh, I think that uh, the woman, the woman that was abandoned, as you said, mm -hmm. she was also blessed. Yeah, she was also blessed because uh, she's going to, and she's still undergoing this process. She's going mm -hmm. to realize hidden powers, more yeah. uh, power in her, and uh, she would be uh, the best model, role model for her children as well. Yes, that's it. So if uh, for me, uh, every crisis brings an opportunity. And in that case, that crisis in her family will make mm -hmm. her uh, exploit her potential to the maximum. And that would be the greatest lesson she can give to other women, and not only to other women, but also, but also to her children. Okay. And her children are going to respect more uh, mm -hmm. the female, the female uh, attempt to keep a family uh, united and uh, to show that uh, even that uh, companionship is welcome. It cannot be enforced. If it is to talk about power and to talk about thrones and to talk about uh, a, a, a miserable companionship, then it's, it's better to stay alone, uh, working for the good, for the welfare of the community, if you can't uh, bring this kind of harmony to your own family, how can you bring it globally? If you don't feel in harmony with yourself, how are you supposed to inspire that people do it? That's why she's blessed. Yes. And about the, the, the idea you said that we also need to be pampered, we also need to feel love. That's why I mentioned the, the visionary feminism, which uh, paves the way for that kind of uh, emotional relationship. And not only for uh, between men and women, uh, love between all the aspects of our life, when it, ha when, when it has to do with uh, um, a working condition, between colleagues, when it has to do with uh, the way we uh, view parenting. There it needs a lot of love as well to give, when it has to do with humanity, when it has to do with uh, the way we treat even our enemies, because the best way to make your enemy enemy understand that you are powerful is just to show that he's your best, he or she's your best friend. 
So in that way, we shouldn't consider only men as uh, enemies towards women. We can also see women as enemies towards women or men as enemies towards men, because this is, the, this is reality. We have a stereotype that only women are weak. No, it can go always wrong. I see it holistically. I can see women who think that it is an eye for an eye. I have seen men who have seen that it's an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth. And I have seen men as opposed to women and women as opposed to men. It's all the motives, all the patterns. That's why I talked about a synthesis because the realities are not uh, previous stereotypes. The reality is that there is no standardized pattern. It has to do with the way we view it. If we can't control dominance, we can control our minds and then we can control the whole world. Yeah, yeah. I have to <laughs> stop, I guess. <laughs> you are very I have amazing. to stop talking. <laughs> no, we are listening. We are listening. Thank you very much. I would like to listen to you as well. Uh, any, <laughs> any other? Uh, yes, uh, I, I don't want to. This is what I'm, I'm, I'm telling my students. This is your show. I don't want to dominate the scene. I want to listen. It's, it's your time. Yeah. No, uh, we, we how, mostly how agree with fabulous. you, ma'am. <laughs> We, we agree that uh, there should be like equality, like uh, a cooperation between male and female. Moreover, when they are a, a spouse already, when they have a commitment already, to, so they have to hold, hold strongly to their, to, to their commitment and solve any uh, gender gap or gender bias that uh, produced by the culture behind uh, behind them I think so if we if we actually philosophize uh, on that we would see that there is not only um, inequality regarding men and women mm -hmm. it is it is a law of nature <laughs> there are people who are bad and people who are good there are asymmetries ev everywhere there are people who are more good looking and people who are less good looking I wouldn't say ugly, I would say less good looking. There are people who have more, who are more privileged and people who are less privileged. I don't want to use the word poor and rich. Mm -hmm. Politically correctness in everything. So these are not good terms for me to use. I, wouldn't, I, would, I would say that if we look around us, we would see that there are people who are more powerful and people who are less powerful. So this is one of the inequalities, but the degree to which we let it overwhelm us mm. is, is, the, is the right uh, dilemma here. Should we let it overwhelm us or should we uh, actually dominate and uh, try to uh, change this kind of attitude? Everything has to do with the way we view it. The way we view it and the way we uh, think about it. It mm -hmm. has to do with our attitudes for all the inequalities. There is no ugliness if you can't see ugliness. There is no power if you cannot see power. Nothing at all. Everything mm -hmm. is veiled. So if we want to see powerful women, we will see them. If we want to see weak men, we will see them. It's, mm -hmm. It has to do with, with the way we view them. But reality is that for me, there are asymmetries everywhere. So let's pre-program our minds and pre-program our souls to make them equal. That's very great uh, confirmation related to how the man and woman should be, yeah? Related to the equality, related to what's that supplementary each other, one to another, yeah? That's very great. Perhaps this is uh, from uh, what marriage couple. How about our young generations, our we have actually in uh, in this in this uh, session we have participants from the students, and they haven't married yet. Perhaps they need to what's that? Find out how they will have in their marriage. Perhaps they need to talk related to how should be 
later if you want to be my a husband or my my wife later perhaps yes. from the participant mbak Aksolani or perhaps mbak Fitri Witri mbak Lailatu or others please hello or from another man here we have Dr. Sudhir from India hello sir hello sir Hello. Yeah, perhaps we haven't got any uh, question or command from the chat box. I don't know from the YouTube channel. Perhaps uh, Bu Eva or Pak Wafi. Okay, let me let me see. Let me see. YouTube channel. Uh, no questions. No questions. Not yet, ma'am. Yeah, no questions okay. yet. Um, they are in the process. They they are in the process of thinking about it. Uh -huh. So it's 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 a reflection stage. That's why I guess. Yeah. You talk a lot about practitioner feminism, right? <laughs> so yeah, it is it is not easy. Mm -hmm. But uh, Mrs. Evangelia, do do you teach uh, in Greece? Yes, I do. Uh, higher and I teach or. Yes, uh, and I teach mm -hmm. international students as well, not only ah, Greek students. Yes. Okay. Do do you uh, also? Do you also include these issues other than environment issues, yes. uh, yes. gender-based uh, gender issues? Hmm? Of course, ethics education. Yeah. It's it's my basis. I cannot I cannot teach ah. without it. And every single moment when I find uh, the opportunity, I keep telling them things that they need to know. For example, how they should respect each other even when they are online. Mm. When we uh, upload, when they upload the document, mm. and and I I'm telling them for just a, a very simple example. Well your classmate has shared with you his or her knowledge and you mm. didn't put a like, you didn't put a heart, you didn't encourage him or her. So mm. what kind of kindness is this? What kind of I collaboration is this? Mm. So in every single moment, I'm trying to instill them with a virus of empathy. Mm. Yeah, so even though it, it seems um, a little action, just by hitting the likes, but the impact is uh, their friends like being uh, being like appreciated more, right? It's yeah. like a domino effect. It's yeah. like a domino effect. Yeah. One That's follows so the other. So inspiring, man. Inspiring, man. So later, yes. our students should, should be courage to do that. That simple, but giving. They don't belong. To, they don't effect. belong to my team. I'm asking them. Do you want to belong to my team? I have called them my celebrity class. I give mm -hmm. them labels, and they like mm -hmm. it because they process it and they start behaving like this. And I'm telling them my celebrity class would never do this. Mm. Uh, somehow, if you want to belong to our team, you can do whatever you want in, at an individual level. But if you want to belong to our team, and if you want to be one of us with no notions of otherness, you need to follow that kind of, of policy. Yes, protect each other, you are a team. Mm. You are a team, you work together. You need to help each other. You need, when a, when a classmate of yours has no questions to pose or has no, um, doesn't feel comfortable in posing a question, you need to encourage, you mm. need to protect, to be at the forefront. I, I'm telling them many things, but I do not, uh, after the lesson, I don't uh, interrupt my lessons. I just collect my material, I just observe them, and then I make my comments. And even thanking them for being there, and I always thank them, and I'm telling them, thank you for being with me today. Thank you for sharing your screen with me today. You inspired me to become an even better teacher. What am I teaching them? I'm teaching them that I'm here for you, and I want you to be here for me as well. So in that sense, I think uh, through books, we can't uh, help them understand what equality is. The only thing we can do is to be the actual uh, persona of uh, the notion of, a, of an advocate of, of equality. If we don't do this, then we are just like a bubble, just talks and uh, yeah. big words, big words. I also tried to, uh, I think it was two years ago, 
Uh, I delivered a talk on political correctness. It was a big, a big conference. And I distributed, uh, if, if I remember correctly, 100 leaflets about how they can change their phraseology regarding uh, undermining language uh, with reference to, to vulnerable, vulnerable uh, groups like underprivileged people or um, uh, students with, or people with learning disabilities or uh, marginalized people, how we should uh, address them in a better way and how we should stop this kind of asymmetry of power and ideology in modern course books, because there is still indirectly uh, a dose of inequality, not so big as it used to be, but I can detect flames judging by the language that is being used. For example, language like paralyzed and not people with paralysis. So this kind of syntactic uh, change can also alter the way we think because we read them, these are written, it's like a stain. It stays there, it's not verbal communication. This is what I do in my classes at least, along with yeah. the lessons. So you yeah. make it like a debate while you have uh, to post that. Uh, train them or practice them how to be how's that, uh, equal one another between a man and a woman there. It's one way to have a debate, I mean, while having uh, uh, having classes. Discussion. Having a discussion. It can be like that. One of way, one way. Yeah, Miss Afangelia? Yes. Yeah. So uh, can I say that one of, uh, what's that, example uh, in your classroom instruction here, debate is one of the ways to have, what's that, uh, discussion between a man and a woman in your classes? If I could uh, make a lesson out of uh, the today's uh, topic, you mean? This is what you're asking me, if I understood correctly. Mm. How to make this a debate? Yeah. Yeah, perhaps uh, they have, uh, what's that? They can share their ideas from this, from their argument. We can see that uh, they can make, I mean, they can make their, what's that? Perception. They, we can see their perception. We can, have, what's that? We can have a look to, uh, what's that? What point they made for this the certain topic they have made in the debate or the discussion? The best the best way for me to sensitize uh, students and not only students but also audiences mm -hmm. is to make them uh, associated, connected to what they see, because the more uh, emotionally engaged they are, the the more emotionally engaged they are, the more motivated they will be. For example, uh, I would ask them to choose one female warrior for women mm -hmm. that uh, really represent them or they would love to be like her and why. And I would ask then the boys in the class mm -hmm. or the, the young adults in my class to find any kind of weaknesses that they could see in reference to their personality. So I would try to trigger their observation skills along with the emotional impact that women, uh, the girls would have after, after choosing their character. So you can imagine what would happen with uh, the boys actually trying to find faults in the profile that the girls have chosen that represents them that it would be one way to trigger debate. Yeah, yeah, uh, through, discussions. Through, yes, discussions, exactly. One way, there, of course, there are many ways. There is a multitude of ways to trigger discussion. Wow, that would be great suggestion, Ms. Evangelia. Well, I think, I think uh, a picture can also, a picture, a picture can also uh, trigger uh, a good discussion, right, ma'am? Like, for example, a picture of a husband washing the dishes while uh, a wife, yes. like, 
working on their laptop, something like that, sharing domestic job that maybe uh, it like a long time ago, this is for women, this is for men, but nowadays in the modern era, it 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 doesn't separated by the sex uh, the sex type, but more to the who can do that. I can do that. If you do other thing, let me help you. Something like that, sharing sharing domestic thing in a picture. Do okay. you do this, boys? For example, <laughs> later when you I, become a dad. <laughs> yes, my motto is seeing seeing is believing. Seeing, seeing is, is believing. believing, yeah. A picture more than a thousand words. Seeing is believing, yeah. Yeah, Baba Ping, do you want to say something? Uh, uh, um, I'm interested uh, with uh, what Eva said that uh, mm. we try to share uh, the domestic uh, jobs and I used to do that uh, the day uh, yeah, I got married with my wife. <laughs> the day I got married with my wife and uh, we shared the domestic um, uh, jobs and it's fun. Yeah. It's, yeah. fun. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. It's fun sometimes. <laughs> Another type of romanticism. <laughs> it's fun if this is done once per year. Yeah. It's not fun. Can <laughs> <laughs> you switch the role? But, but... It's not fun because because uh, I have been doing it for 18 years. Because I, I, yes, I have been married for 18 years and, uh -huh. and, and I'm doing this very often. <laughs> Me too. So it's not fun anymore. I want to take a break. <laughs> no, we uh, a wait for another year. But, 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 the uh, grown up. <laughs> but uh, I train I train my uh, eldest daughter to do this. She's uh, at the age of 16. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's true. That's true, uh Miss uh, Evangelia. That um, you know, in talking about uh, a child, I mean. That woman here is really stronger than men, especially taking care of the children. You know, uh, for me myself, I'm taking care of my child. Let's say one hour is okay, two hours is okay, but uh, <laughs> beyond that, everything is going mess up. And but my wife is taking care of children. I'm, I think all day everything is fine. <laughs> so I think uh, uh, women are very strong, strong, strong one in this case. So the right word is systematicity of housework. Yes. You can you, exactly. you can also you can also make a schedule Monday, oh, yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, and follow it follow uh, it with no excuses. But but now yeah yeah uh, finally uh, you know then I, I I schedule myself so early morning it's my job and uh, till let's say ten o'clock it's on me and my wife come from the school and everything is on her now so I am free in the afternoon midday in the afternoon I am free. But morning is my job. So, okay, Pawaki, good. you have a contract with your wife. Not really contract, but uh, <laughs> this unwritten is unwritten contract. unwritten contract. Yes. <laughs> and uh, finally, we, we understand that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah. unof unofficial, unofficial one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah, actually, I share my domestic job right now. I mean, from 1 p.m. here to 3 p.m. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's been oh. here. Yeah. So, okay. my husband here is... I has to take care of my my daughters, my little daughters, and of course my son. And we have we have to what's that share other domestic domestic uh, job, yeah. Oh yeah, I have a problem. Perhaps uh, Pawafi has a housemate in your home to help your wife, or you just stay with your wife and also your children. Yeah, my wife, my children, and my. Uh parent in law by my side, I mean, uh, different different house. But with as long as we are there, we try to, near. yeah. Still near, okay. We are, um, we... I, have a, a, I have a question perhaps for uh, for Miss Angel Evangelia or even Eva or uh, Pa Abdul Wafi, yeah? It's um, Evangelia, Evangelia. Evangelia, Evangelia. 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 yes. Okay, sorry for me. No, 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 it's, it's okay. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> uh, taking care as a woman, taking care of children uh, with the husband support, it's very great, yeah. <clears throat> but how if there is no support system in a, in a, its a family means that uh, the man, I mean the husband itself, uh, try to have a 
<clears throat> strong belief that the woman here asks uh, help uh, to the man, but no support. I mean, no family support. How? How can we make it? I mean, how to make our family become a happy family then? Perhaps do you have any suggestion for those you are referring to the pandemic situation? Yeah, of course. Uh, perhaps, perhaps the family yeah. doesn't have any housemate or perhaps they didn't live with her parents. They just uh, have to stay uh, between a man, a woman and children only. The problem is when men stop working and they spend so much time together. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> and. And somehow it, it may sound like uh, a new date because after many <laughs> years of marriage. <laughs> you, yeah, that's an advice. You can make it that way. Make it a new date. <laughs> uh, and uh, they don't know each other because uh, due to the hectic way of uh, life, uh, we spend a lot of time that we are not together. We spend a lot of time at work, a lot of time uh, with... Uh, our duties at home. So it's uh, it's an opportunity, as I said before, to reconnect and mm. uh, get to know each other again from the beginning. Why not? Mm. No. Uh, in that case, it can work, but uh, there is also the antipode where it might be worse because uh, families that already had problems, then this can lead to domestic violence. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so there, uh, there is no solution. The solution is not to be anymore with the people that bring this uh, situation into uh, your life. Awesome. For me, that's there a is, big it's, decision. It's, it's it's black and white for me. There, there wow. is no yes. There, the warrior comes out, and the princess, wow. the princess uh, takes uh, goes on holidays. There, there is no princess there. It's the other side the side of warrior who says that I won't accept it anymore. Whether you like it or not, I respect my personality. And if I'm here to receive that kind of violence, well, I'm out, I go. Mm -hmm. There are many, uh, in many ways, women can be supported. Yeah. Many ways. Yeah. It is um, difficult and very, very, very difficult, but there is always a solution to a problem. The only solution to a problem that cannot be a solution is when it comes to other more serious matters like terminal diseases mm. and death. Yeah. In all the other things, in all the other things, there is a solution. There is something that can be done. I can't accept that there is no solution to other cases or even a compromise or even an agreement if, if we can't talk about the ideal solution or even a mediation. So women are not victims. There is no victimization anymore unless they believe in themselves. They need to believe oh. that the power comes from within them. But if they keep swallowing and if they keep uh, hiding facts that are happening, then this is going to be a vicious circle and it's going to be perpetuated nonstop. would be great suggestion for us. Uh, <laughs> no, no, um, uh, last I, 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 I am not trying, I, I don't want any, don't worry, any misunderstandings. No, I, I'm not trying to uh, bring a status quo. I'm not trying to uh, make, uh, you know, a chaos. Uh, in, and, uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to say this. I'm just trying to say that. Uh, when, in the worst when, thing, yeah. If the worst yes. thing happened, that's the final then, decision. Then, mm -hmm. then we have to talk about human rights, not only about yeah. men and women. It yeah. has to do with the human, human rights, rights to get respect. Exactly. It's not about men and women anymore. It goes to another level that yes. as a person, I have to be respected. I cannot be beaten. I cannot be uh, sexually or orally uh, assaulted. Yes. Yeah. I can't. It has to do with self-respect. So I think this is the, the, our job as an educator to, uh, to seeing is believing, like giving an example, 
give an example to early uh, yeah, to young learners how to be more respectful to apa to to women or to women to to men It's like respecting each other and um, not harming each other because when it is i believe when it is taught since the beginning when they are adult when they grown up uh, even though they have the worst arguments for example they will not easily harm others they yes, use uh, they use uh, what is it discussions argumentations and uh, to solve the problems not We using call this, physics uh, yes a constructive dialogue hmm? mm. yeah yes yeah. constructive oh. dialogue what is your problems what can i do for you this is my problems what can you do for me something something like that like not like you should do this <laughs> something mm. you cannot do that we, we should teach that to to the young learners we can do that even though we are an english uh, teacher in in our materials in the activities in the learning activities in simple thing like mrs evangelia said that just like uh giving empathy to your your friends work that's good it will teach them to to respect to respect others later on maybe to respect their wife both. first you inspire them to respect you and then you yeah. teach respect yeah yeah we should give example first uh, give the, <clears throat> give them uh, give us the right to receive to receive that respect yeah to receive that the respect inspire uh, to inspire yeah. inspire ya yeah. semangat ibu-ibu <laughs> so i think we have we, we have discussed everything there is no other uh for, for uh for now any other uh, points to uh talk about ibu adik adik lulu do you want to say something ya yeah, we have next Adik lulu, adik lulu, dede lulu, mother will be. <laughs> oh, mana? Siapa mother will be? I guess uh, we are running out of the time. Oh yeah, yeah. it is yeah. three o'clock. Time flies when you have a nice discussion. <laughs> you know what? What? One word I want to say. Talking about women, there is no enough time and enough what to talk about women. Women is always is you know interesting to talk about. And probably uh, women feel the same uh, thing to the men. Talking about men. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Um, yeah. yeah, probably you have got a closing remark, uh, Miss Evangelia. Yeah, please. We also still have Ibu Fifin here. Yeah, we um, have Miss Fifin is... It's not... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, we She's have. She's still have. here. She's still here. Okay. Yeah, that's Ibu Fifin. I think... Uh, really since I think she's not like we didn't have the chance to talk about. We didn't have the chance to discuss with uh, Miss Vivian. We didn't have the chance to discuss. Yeah, perhaps. Um, uh, Miss Evangelia, Evangelia, hello, Miss Evangelia. Miss Vivian here is uh, the coordinator of Peace Corps uh, Indonesia, right? Uh, you know, we have volunteers from America, and then uh, they can work in schools here in Indonesia. Good. Right. Um, what was the, I'm sorry, I didn't really catch the instruction. <laughs> uh, is there any final, uh, maybe uh, if oh, you, final Ibu words. Angelia, yeah, final words from Ibu Evangelia and also Ibu Fifin. You're feeling if to be I, woman. Um, <laughs> dealing with our topics. For me, um, I'd like I mean, this this is not just in regards to International Women's Day. This is not just about us women. This is about everyone, both men and women. And in regards to my topic, like uh, encouraging micro <laughs> bravery, I encourage not just girls and women, but also men, boys and men, to um, practice bravery. It's not uh, it's simple things like asking questions or asking for help it can be something brave that you can try or you can do because for boys and for men they are expected to always 
be brave, always know everything, be strong. You're not allowed to, to ask for help you, because that can be seen as you know, a sign of weakness. But actually, no, you are also part of uh, this uh, efforts that you, know, you can be emotional, you can show, show that you need help you can ask for help you can you could try all the things that women usually do or have you know the privilege or more opportunities to do so we need to encourage bravery and equality and equity in all aspects of life thank you yeah. Ibu Eva this is Evangelia. Maybe do you have final statement? I have, and I will make it as less academic as I can. Um, all this period of time that I was invited in conferences to talk about uh, the Women's International Day, uh, I kept uh, playing a song, one particular song that was by Gloria Gaynor, mm -hmm. and it was uh, the title was "But First Be a Woman." So, for all of you <laughs> that you are not familiar with the song. You can uh, use your YouTube. You can write first be a woman, Gloria Gaynor. And that would be my final comment to all the participants and all the people here. As Gloria I said, the less Gaynor, academic Pawaki, one. Maybe yes. you can play it. Gloria. Yes. But, but, first, but first be a woman. And I would like to finish with a song. <laughs> be a woman. Yes, first be a woman. First be a woman. Exactly. Or verse, verse. First, first, first. Oh, first. Wow. This one. First, be a woman by Gloria. 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 Okay. You found that? Let me share screen. Perfect. Be a woman. Gloria. Perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got it, got it, got it. Got it. This one? Oh, I hear. <laughs> when you're walking down the street, show your femininity. Even though you're wearing jeans, it's important to be real. You are born to be yourself, so no matter how you feel, if you want to impress, be the opposite sex. When he takes you for a ride, let him open you the door. When he asks you for a dance, let him lead you to the floor. Oh, I see. When he kisses you tonight, you just feed him one more. <laughs> Setting it. No problem. The message, the message has been conveyed. <laughs> we never, we should never forget that we're women, and first of all, we should be women. I. Mana ni matiin. Gimana aku matiin share screen ku? I, I think it's done. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, uh, it played on my YouTube. <laughs> that's why there is a sound on it. And that's a good song. I will watch it later. This is my first time uh, hearing that <laughs> song and touch me. <laughs> the point is, is to feel, is to feel a woman. The point is to remember that you are a woman. The point yeah. is to remember that above all, you might be yeah. an academician. You might be a housekeeper. Mm. You might be yeah. a mother above yeah. all. You are a woman. Yeah. And we should not forget that. Yeah. Because we are a woman, then we deserve to love. <laughs> by anybody, exactly. not only by a man, by anybody, by our students, our college, our parents, our family, our society. Because we are a woman. And because Pak Wafi is a man. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. He's thinking. Go. He's thinking about the song, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> about the high heel. <laughs> Why should I listen to that song if I am a man? Thinking of the. <laughs> you should listen to that song. That's it's cool. Because it's, by knowing what, what because by knowing the opposites, mm, yeah. by knowing what yeah. night is, you understand what what day is. Mm. Yes. Yeah. I know okay. white because I know black. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. By knowing the the women the way they think, then you know them better. Yep, absolutely. So that was all from me, I guess. Uh, we closing can call it ibu. Closing ibu. That was my That's final remark. Was. Yeah. So we can close our meeting today. Uh, thank you very much for two presenters today. Uh, thank my pleasure. You for all the explanation and also the insight for us here uh, thank you for being here thank you for spending time with us today in this session uh, perhaps we can uh, meet you with a different time in different occasion yeah i mean uh, thank sure. you for attending this webinar thank you for all the participants for all the wonderful participants here that has given a comment or even a question here and I return to Pa'wafi as the host today. Thank you for lecture talk series A for having topic, why become a princess if you can become a warrior. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Lasmi Fabriani Room as moderator. I will return to Pa'wafi as a host in this program. Yes, uh, a warrior, not warrior. Okay, man. <laughs> warrior. Not warrior, but wa <laughs> warrior. yes. Be be a woman career, not woman career. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes, that's for sure. Yes. Me, me spelling can be a problem. Uh, yes. yes. Well, uh, everyone, thank you very much for uh, joining in our. Uh, event it's so interesting and so amazing to be with you all especially to miss uh, Vivian uh, representing Indonesian uh, women and also Miss Evangela Fasilako representing international women <laughs> I was <laughs> and uh, thank you very much for Bulasmi uh, for being such a very wonderful moderator and Bu Eva Yayan Madura as uh, a great big boss in, uh, no, don't say that. <laughs> and Mr. Abdul Ghafur uh, for being, uh, uh, you know, so faithful in being with us uh, as uh, advisor. Well, uh, from from me as a house, uh, we would like to meet you again in the next series, uh, series uh, nine. And we are waiting for uh, your uh, feedback, uh, what kind of topic we are going to discuss in the session. And especially for Ms. Evangela Fasilako for, uh, you know, there are a lot of things uh, I got from her, especially in mm. making such a better uh, event for the next. Okay. And uh, Ms. Evangelia, I have sent you uh, a word. And also to Ms. Vivian, I have sent you a word and a uh, letter of appreciation, also certificate. I have sent you through the email. And, uh, you know, if Ms. Typo, uh, so please uh, kindly contact me. Well, thank you very much. So, see you. A happy International Women's Day. Women's Day. Women's Day, yes. Be a strong woman, even though if you are a princess. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Abdul Ghafur, do you want to say something to Ms. Evangela Fasilaku related to probably uh, MOU thing? Another one. Good. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Now that we're about to end it, we're going to start it again. <laughs> <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> So officially, closing, of, closing. officially, it is uh, closed. So this is another thank session. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank, thank you, Vivian. Thank you, Ibu Thank you. Ibu yeah. It's been a pleasure. Bye. Thank you very much, Ibu. Have a good day.